This is a Spree Model Network TV and you're watching How To Jetty Programming. Today I'm joined by James who's going to help us explain your Jetty 2.4 duplex transmitter. Hey guys, James with Esprit Model Jetty USA. Thanks for joining us. Uh, to, on this video, I want to introduce you to some of the display uh, telemetry and some of the voice or, or sounds on events that a lot of you guys like to use. Uh, example of sounds on a van are setting voice to your flight modes. And that you know, like like I have here, I run I run uh, camber settings for a sailplane. Normal, thermal, normal, speed. And it's one of the nice things that you can do in the radio. So I'll show you how to set those up, how to add those to the radio, uh, so that you can blow your friends away at the field and uh, get better use out of your Jetty DS or DC radio. Um, first thing we want to do is display telemetry. As you see on my screen, I'm not displaying any of the radio telemetry data. Um, you won't see a lot of values pop in because we're doing this without being connected to a model. But I'm going to go ahead and we're going to start off by going into our menu. I'm going to turn the volume down for you a little bit. We're going to go into our timers and sensors. And we're going to click on displayed telemetry. Now, in this page, you'll see that I don't have any telemetry displayed. So you click on the Add button uh, and a list will come up. Uh, if you have sensors plugged into the system and if you're bound to a receiver, uh, all of the data that's available to you from those sensors will appear on this page. Um, for now, we're just getting the basics that are available from the receiver or from the radio system itself. So we're going to go ahead and select voltage receiver. I'm going to click on that. Um, now on the line you'll see telemetry, which is what you've selected, and double, yes or no, and, and, and double just indicates how much space it occupies on the front page of the radio. It's either a single space or a double space. So we're going to go ahead and change that to yes for double. Um, we're going to OK out of that. I'm going to back out to the main screen so you get an idea. Uh, the box on the top left is a single. The box on the top right there is a double space. And you can see how large that is. Uh, the numbers are quite large. They're easy to read at a glance. Uh, don't forget that you can also play these through the voice as well, so you don't have to worry about the spacing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pop back into the menu, back into timers and sensors, and back into our displayed telemetry, and I'm going to go ahead and add, add one more. So we're going to click Add on the bottom of the screen. We're going to select Transmitter Battery. Uh, let's go ahead and actually we're going to select Antenna from the list. I'll click on that. We don't need to double size that. Uh, so we're going to leave it as is and we're going to click OK. Back out again and now you see it's added a, another telemetry box on the front page of the screen. Just that easy to do. Again, the more sensors you add, the more telemetry you're going to have available to you to display. You can display telemetry up to the three pages deep on the main screen or on the screen of the radio. Uh, so don't worry about you know, adding too much or, oh no, I only have five spaces on the front page. No, you have three pages worth of data you can display. Uh, now if you want to go on and move on to the sounds on event, uh, which was how you assign sounds to things like flight modes or brakes or any input on the radio, you can do that by clicking menu, back into our advanced properties, and right in the middle is sounds on event. If you click on sounds on event, You'll notice uh, that we have quite a few set up here, but the way this works is if you scroll down and, and you don't see one that you're looking for there, if you hadn't added it, you click Add at the bottom of the screen. Uh, brings up a new emptied box. You select the switch that you want to assign a sound to. Uh, well, it helps if you click on it first. If you click on that line, then click again. It'll open up Select Input Control. Then you can flip the switch you want to use. Click OK. Scroll the wheel to the right so you can select the sound that you want to use. It'll open up your sound files from your radio. Um, it's multiple pages deep, so you can scroll through and look for the one you're looking for or the one you want to use. We're going to go ahead and click on the alarm. Um, if you want to see what that sounds like, you can click the play icon at the bottom of the screen. Alarm. And it'll play that for you. If it's not the one you want, it's very simple. You click on it again. 
go through until you find the one you want. Receiver bound. And you can select it there. Of course, that's not the one we'll choose. But if you ever have a problem or you get stuck in there and, and you've messed the whole thing up, you want to get rid of the switch, you want to get rid of the sound as well, just click delete on that line and you can take those out of there. Uh, if you have a switch that you want to assign a sound on event to and you don't have the sound in the radio, uh, you can use any number of text to wave programs uh, that you find online uh, to create those sound files. When you go to do that, make sure that you drop those into the, into the audio file on your radio, not into the voices file on your radio. If you drop into the voices file, uh, they will not appear in your sounds file and they won't be available for you to use on the radio. Uh, if you get hung up on anything, like always guys, reach out to me on the email at james at espreemodel.com or uh, give us a call at Esprit Model or Jetty USA. Uh, thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time.